So I'm in the week 10 folder under in class content and exercises and I'm about to just quickly look over the soccer league case scenario. Um, you've probably already read the description yourself but if you haven't go back and give it a quick read. Uh, what we're dealing with is a youth soccer league at least for the time being. I'm going to extend on that in time. Um, intended to track players, coaches and sponsors. Uh, so we've got th three types of people that we want to track. We've got players, coaches, sponsors, we can separate those into separate entities for now. Uh, there may be any number of teams in the league, so we need to track teams and we need, it says limited to a maximum of 15 players. We can't really enforce that with the database, so we're ignoring kind of the fact that there's a maximum of 15 players. Uh, each team has one head coach and usually one or two assistant coaches. Okay, so a team may have multiple coaches. Uh, a coach can coach more than one team. Um, and so that's sort of a many-to-many -many relationship. A team can have many coaches, a coach can coach many teams. Um, each team has one sponsor. A sponsor can sponsor multiple teams. Um, a player can only play for one team, and a team can have many players, as we determined earlier, up to 15 players. Your solution uh, should enable the user to do all these things. Well, we can almost ignore these, but basically we want to be able to list all these things. So that's to be able to select from a table to get that information out. Um, we want to find out what the name of the player's guardian is. Okay. Um, I have a sort of elaborate solution to the guardian issue, but we can always um, kind of we can always taper it back and ignore some portions of it. Uh, we also can uh, want to be able to list all players, like we have already said. Uh, identify coaches and sponsor for a particular team, okay. And list all teams, list all coaches, teams for a sponsor, list all teams for a coach. Um, now we have a couple of attribute suggestions here, which means that for this particular case, there's a little bit of freeform allowed. But I'm just going to, for the most part, stick to, you know, the stuff that we would expect to find. Okay, so what I'm using here is a tool called uh, draw.io. I will reduce its size a little bit here so that we can see it. So I'm just in my browser and you can create uh, uh, kind of uh, visio, almost visio level diagrams with this tool. So I thought I would uh, give, a ch give us a chance to showcase it. Um, so you can see I've got my crow's feet, I've got my, um, my entity boxes. Um, there's a couple of things where I've kind of um, I've left the, um, the standard conventions, like I'm going to get rid of this triple dots, the dot dot dots, kind of like just like anything else and so on, right? So team name, team color, maybe there's a mailing address for team mail, and so on, right? But anyway, we determined that a sponsor can have many teams and a team can only have one sponsor. So we have a one, and we have a many, one to many. So the fork's stuck in the team, which means that the team is the child of the sponsor. Um, same thing applies to player from team. So team is the parent of player, um, at least in terms of the way the relationship between the two go. Um, fork is stuck in player making it the child. Um, same thing with player to player guardian and then from guardian to player guardian. This becomes a many to many relationship and we'll discuss that in a moment. Um, okay now a team can have many coaches and a coach can have many teams and we can't just directly connect them because there's no way to represent them using a foreign key which is really the only way that databases work if we try to connect them directly. Um, we would end up kind of forcing either a circular relationship or um, we would end up with numerous other issues that uh, could get in the way. Uh, we won't discuss those now because we have talked about them a little bit in the past and we'll talk a little bit more about them in the future, so I'm not going to stick with them. However, uh, for the moment, uh, just be aware that when you have a many-to-many -many relationship, when you say a team can have many coaches and a coach can have many teams or be on many teams or whatever language you choose to use, um, you are going to need this middle table, what we call a junction or associative table. And just to keep it, um, I guess, simple as possible, we can always use a combination of the two 
parent table names in this new junction table to create the junction table name. So because we're connecting team and coach, we can call it team underscore coach. And that works so long as there's only one many-to-many -many conceptual relationship between the two entities. If there are multiple, you have to name the table a little closer to the concept. In this case, it does make sense to say we're looking for who the team coaches are. And then I threw in a, uh, an extra column in here to say team coach type because we may have a head coach, we may have an assistant coach. You can see that in the coach table I put in a first name, last name, and contact phone number. And I created a coach ID field as our primary key. And the reason for that is because it's always possible that a person's name can change. You know, I, I could go and uh, ask for a name change. Maybe a coach is um, married and gets remarried and their last name changes um, and so on. Now we've got some information about our sponsor. We have their name and the city that they live or that they're in. But typically we'd probably have... Um, you know more address information so that we could mail the sponsors you know invitations to sponsor the next year's teams and so on for teams we're tracking name and color like I said we might have a mailing address in there but we're not going to track that for our demo purposes same thing with a player we have their first and last name we want to know about their date of birth whether they're a male or female we're also looking to track guardian if we said that we put a guardian field in the player table then we would only be able to put one guardian there but in reality in a team you might have a mother and a father maybe an older brother a stepmother a stepfather and uh, a babysitter and all them who are authorized to pick up a player so it could be more than one person and it's not a specific number not an exact number of how many people so one or more um, but the same by the same token um, there might be multiple players who are children of the same guardian so you know same mom same dad in the league so we um, can't say that a player has multiple guardians and not that a player guardian doesn't have multiple players so here I've kind of extended that relationship so that our guardian um, can uh, also have multiple players now when you have guardian can have many players player can have many guardians you need this junction table in between um, notice these plus symbols on our junction tables. The plus symbols go with the relationships and they say that the foreign key created by sticking a fork into our junction table or into any table for that matter, the foreign key is going to become part of the primary key. So our player guardian's primary key is going to be a combination of the player ID and the guardian ID. So the same player doesn't have two records for the same guardian, and the same guardian doesn't have two records for the same player. But they're allowed at least one record. Um, and that way, uh, we make sure that we're not duplicating data, so when we go to get statistics, we don't get the wrong statistics, and so on. Uh, same thing applies to the team coach here. We don't need the same person recorded as uh, coaching the same team multiple times. Later on, we're going to have a look at junction tables where we might have uh, a primary key that's not made up of the foreign keys and we'll discuss the reasons why at that time.